life of the Christian is not a secret life. And there's no secrecy in the person that actually is living a life that shows Christ. What did Christ say when they were asking him questions? He said, don't ask me, ask them. I did nothing in secret. Everything I said, everything I did, I did in the open. That's the life of the Christian. And so if you're a real Christian following after Christ and you're walking in the light, you're not, you know, staying behind some closed doors and making the darkness to cover up at something that you're doing. You come out and you live a transparent life, a righteous life, and a holy life. And you're reflecting the life of Christ. That's what you will do. I said that's what you will do. When somebody pulls you into a dark corner and says, can we talk? I say, no, I'm a child of light. Let's go to the light over there. And let's enjoy the light of the sun. And let's do everything we do and say everything we say right in the open so that they can know that I am following Christ and you are following Christ. And then your life in the light will pull them to walk in the light in Jesus' name. Then it says in verse 13, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light that's when it comes now to the conclusion and tells us and counsels every one of us in verse 14 wherefore he says awake that that sleepest this is not the time to sleep i said it's not the time to sleep we're going to wake up God has given us something to do and it's when you are alert and you are awake, that's when it will be done. And this church will wake up. Because God has given us something to talk about. And God has given us promises to possess. And God has given us a way to follow, a path to follow. And it works with you and we're going to do it. And even the least of us, the youngest of us, we're going to wake up and we're going to run the race that is set before us in Jesus' name. Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. When God gives you that light, that light will shine. Your light will never go dim again. In Proverbs chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. The way from verse 18, the, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth how? More and more unto the perfect day. Your light will shine. And then you'll be getting brighter and brighter in Jesus' name. You will not backslide. You will not look back. You will not be lukewarm. You'll not grow cold. You'll be hot for the Lord in Jesus' name. Because it says the path of the righteous. The path of the one that is made righteous by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. That path is shining more and more onto the perfect day. Let's come to the New Testament. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm reading there from verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, how many of us? But we all, I said, how many of us? Are you part? I said, are you part of this? Yes, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. We behold him, the Lord. You look at the life of Christ as a church. Let's concentrate on Christ. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't even look at yourself. Don't even look at your weakness. And don't look at impossibilities in your life. There's no impossibility for the person that is looking, looking on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, beholding him and looking at him. Don't look at your situation and don't, don't look at your circumstances. Don't look at something around you. Just looking unto Christ. And it is that beholding Christ and looking unto Christ, it says, you'll be changed into the same image. Whatever you see of Christ, God will change you to that. The glory that you see, the godliness that you see, the brightness that you see, the light that you see, the stability that you see, and the confidence in God that you see, that you see in Christ. The Lord is saying, as you are beholding Him and beholding Him, looking at Him, that you are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. 
that change will come and the power of the lord himself will accomplish it in your life it will be done in jesus name in the old testament in job chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 17 job chapter 11 from verse 17 thine age shall be clearer than the noonday and thou shalt shine forth thou shalt be as the morning you see, when you come to Christ, that's what he does. In fact, he tells us from verse 13, If thou prepare thine heart, stretch out thine hands toward him. He says, if you want to experience that thing I read about him, verse 13, you back up a little bit and you start from verse 13 and you prepare your heart and you stretch out your hands toward the Lord. If iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. If, if it happens that in your days of ignorance, in your days of carelessness, in your days when you didn't know that a brighter sea was waiting for you, you got yourself involved in iniquity. Don't just say, well, there's nothing to do. There is something to do. I said there's something to do. Uh, don't say, I've lost my chance. No, you have not lost your chance. Today, you can say, iniquity, get out of my life. I shall get out. I said it will get out. And it says in that verse 14, If iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. And let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. If you can do that today, just turn away and say, No more. Iniquity, no more. Wickedness, no more. All those works of darkness, no more. Just that and then you draw close to the lord and you look at christ to die for you and then as you behold him expecting and believing you're going to be changed and transformed to the same image you see in christ it says here is what will happen when you put that iniquity far away from you in verse 15 for then shall thou lift up thy face without spot yea thou shalt be steadfast and shall not fear because thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away that's when I, now it says and thine age shall be clearer than the noon day and thou shalt shine forth and thou shalt be as the morning we're looking at job chapter 22 verse 28 job chapter 22 i'm looking at verse 28 thou shalt also decree a sin and it shall be established unto thee and thy light and the light shall shine where upon thy ways light will shine upon your ways all darkness and confusion everything will vanish away you know, sometimes when you're in darkness, you're at a crossroads. And, and you don't understand, why did this happen? Why did that happen? That's confusion. And then, how am I like this? How are you like this? That's darkness. That's uncertainty. But the Lord is saying, you can come to the place where, in that verse 28, the light will shine upon thy ways. From this day, all your darkness will vanish away. All your confusion will vanish away and then the light comes upon your ways how does that happen once again we're going to back up to verse 21 verse 21 acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace thereby good shall come unto thee it says, if you want that light to come, that light to shine, be acquainted with the Lord. And then in verse 22, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. In verse 23, if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Everything that is broken down in your life will be built up. Everything broken down in your family will be built up. Everything broken down in your business, your profession, your schooling, whatever. Everything broken down will be built up. Because here it says, and thou shalt be built up. And if that thou shalt put iniquity away far from thy tabernacles. You see, it's the same thing. If the light is going to shine. And if the light is going to come upon your ways, it says, all iniquity will be put far away. And then in verse 24, then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. 
that's another way of saying you are going to be wealthy and rich and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook see the almighty shall be the defense the almighty shall be the defense you have a bodyguard and no evil power will be able to assail or overcome and prevail over your life in jesus name you know the people of the world they're living in fear and, and they count everything they count everything as attack and you know if uh, if the wind is blowing cold air and then they snip that in and then they have cut they say i'm under attack if there is uh, you know sometimes they uh, maybe they breathe in the air that has dust and because of that their throat is choking what oh, they say pray for me i'm having attack a child of god doesn't have attack I said, a child of God doesn't have attack. Because the Almighty will be your defense. It says, I'll be a wall of fire around you. And he that touches you, touches the apple of his eye. No attack will come upon you in Jesus' name. Because of the protection of the Lord. Because of the uh, provision of the Lord. And because of the preservation of the Lord. The Lord is telling you that he himself is going to, is going to defend you. If they come from this way or come from that way, the Lord Almighty by His power, He will come and defend you in Jesus' name. Do you remember when the servant of Elisha woke up in the morning and the king of Syria had sent go and catch him? And then they woke up in the morning and Elisha was just like that, you know, having, his, having a nice time of fellowship with the Lord. And then the servant of Elisha saw them, chariots coming and horses coming from Syria. And they surrounded them. And he said, Alas, my father, what shall we do? And Elijah, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the servant of Elisha. What did you see? And he saw chariots of fire and horses of fire all around about them. And then those people came. And when they came, Elisha said, Who are you looking for? They said, we're looking for, did you know the man was in front of them? They will not recognize you. I said, they will not recognize you. He said, Lord, blindfold them. Make them blind. We have the final say, brothers and sisters. We have the final say. Whatever happens in the lives of those enemies, of those people that want to attack, we have the final say. And if we say, Lord, blindfold them, they are blind. We don't run from them, they run from us. Am I right? Yes. And so they became blind. They thought they saw, they didn't know they were blind. Can you think about the people who are blind who didn't know that they were blind? They didn't know they were blind. And then Elisha said, wait, on the, wait for me there. They'll wait. I said they will wait. We are the people to lead them to where they are going to meet what their final end will be. And then he dressed up and said, just follow me. And he didn't say, who are you? They will not ask any question. Because we are just going to control them. We are in control. We are in charge. We have the final say. And then he got them to the king of Israel. And then he said, Lord, open their eyes. Let them know where they are. And the Lord opened their eyes. They saw they were in the middle of danger. And then the king of Israel said, my father, my father, calling the prophet of God his father. The prophet is a father. I said the prophet is a father. Shall I kill them? He said, why will you kill them? Give them food. If your enemy hunger, give them drink. And if your enemies, uh, give them food. If your enemy thirst, give them drink. It will be coals of fire upon their head. So they ate after eating. I thought the arch, the warrant to arrest the man of God. Who can arrest a man like this? He said, go back and tell your king what your eyes have seen. And they went back and said, we saw what we have never seen. I'm telling you, this year is going to be your breakthrough. Yeah. And those enemies, if they ever come at all, they'll go back to report back at home. We saw what we have never seen. And from that time, those attackers, they never, come, they never came back again. They'll never come back again. Because we're now in the light. And the glory of the Lord is shining upon us. That's why all those people are going to be beaten back in Jesus' name. We're still in Job chapter 22. Because in Job chapter 22, he tells us in verse 25, Yea. 
the almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver you will lend you will not borrow then in verse 26 for they shall thou have that delight in the almighty and shall lift up thy face unto god thou shall make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows and thou shalt also also do you have anything you want to decree today it will be established that shall also be created seen, and it shall be established unto thee. The light shall shine upon thy ways. That's what the Lord is telling us. Reflect the light of Christ. You have come to Christ now. You are a child of God. Now reflect that light. In Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, rather, from verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. Didn't Jesus say, I am the light of the world. Yes, he did. But now you have come to him. And when you come to Christ, he puts his light in your life. He puts his light in your heart, in your spirit. And now he says, go and reflect my light. And now as he pass the light unto you, he says, ye and now the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do, do men light a candle and put it under a bushel and but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. They are in their bad works. They are in their sinful works. They are in their evil works. But they see that you are different. From today you will be different just to reflect the light of christ things have changed your life is transformed and you are changed unto the same image and the glory of christ and now it says they will see they will see that something is different about you they will see your good works and they will glorify who your father who is in heaven point number two radiating the life of the sanctified radiating the life of the sanctified when you come to christ you have that life and you have that light and now you radiate the life of christ and that's a sanctified life we're looking at first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 5 ye are all children the children of of what of light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness since we're born again since we're children of god we're no more of darkness and if you're a real child of god you don't have any evil power any power of darkness if you have any power of darkness you're not in the light yet doesn't matter how many years you've been in the church if you have any kind of power of darkness and any activity in the dark that only your society only your group only the people that you meet together in the night only those people know only your gang only the people there know that you are the one doing this evil thing you are the one doing that evil thing you're not born again all those who are born again they're children of light everything we do everything we say all our actions they are in the light don't let anybody deceive you and say, because they call you brother so and so, calling you brother so and so doesn't save anybody. Calling you sister so and so doesn't save anybody. It is conversion, it is salvation, it is coming out of darkness and coming into the light of Christ. If you were in a secret cult before, if you had evil spirit before, if you had the spirit of darkness, unclean spirit before, and then you came to church, you changed your dressing, but you didn't change your heart. Your life was not changed. Your desires were not changed. You only removed something from your ear. You didn't remove that thing from your heart. You're still in darkness. Those who are born again, they have come out of that darkness, they have come out of that evil. And, and whatever, whatever you do in the dark, and you say, I'm doing this and nobody sees me. How do you know nobody sees you? 
How about people in your gang? They see you now. They know now. They know you are responsible for this and for that. How about God? God sees you. I vouch those of us that have the gifts of the Spirit and the word of knowledge. We see. We know. And if you, have not, if you have not repented, if you have not come out of darkness, then you are still a child of the night. And the works of your father you will do. But here it says, if you are born again, if you are a child of God, here it says, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night and not of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. We will not sleep. Children of God will not sleep. And children of the day will not sleep.